there's a common thread uh, in all of these conversations where we have these global systemic problems that are solvable, but not being solved. Uh, and the key for what we're talking about here and for, for One Shared World is how do we do a better job of addressing each of these individual problems while we recognize that they each and all exist within a broader framework of a system um, that makes it extremely difficult for this entire category of problems to be solved. How do we address our global collective action problem, not just as an abstraction, but in a, a very meaningful and tangible way that helps us solve its many manifestations? And there are no two people I would rather have tying all of these threads together uh, than two very good friends, and I would say part of the One Shared World family, uh, Stephen Hines, uh, the president and CEO of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, and I should say the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, uh, took an early bet supporting us at One Shared World, and we are forever grateful. And my dear friend, Vishaka Desai, who's been part of One Shared World from the very, very uh, beginning, uh, and is the president and, uh, and chair of the Committee for Global Thought at Columbia. Vishaka and Stephen, over to you. Thank you. Well, Stephen, Jamie says that we have to be able to do this, what in fact could take years to actually <laughs> thread together. But it does seem to me that as you and I both heard and have listened and talked to other people, that there are some common threads that show up. And if the way I was thinking about it is that our problem is not that we don't have ideas. We have articulated the problem. We even have ideas to resolve or provide solution, but we're still not getting there. So is the problem of will or implementation or both? Well, it's a, it's a great framing, Vishaka. You know, I, I think it is a problem of will. I think it's also a problem of the incentive structures that exist in our world. Um, and we have, you know, Jane Idu was just saying in the previous session about how we have invented over time a set of institutions, a set of mechanisms, some systems that have embedded inequality and racism in them. And they have persisted for hundreds of years and they have a lot of power behind them. And the incentives are all built into that system. So we have this troubling irony, you know, the more evidence we have of the reality of our inescapable interdependence, the less we seem ready to work collectively to address these unprecedented global challenges we face that we've just been hearing about. Exactly. I mean, it just seems to me that one of the issues is that we can talk about lots of solution, but if we don't go under the solution of why they persist, they will persist. And it seems to me that part of it has to do with both the last 250 years, if one can get philosophical, that we have emphasized since the age of enlightenment in the Western sense, this idea of independence individual being independent and then the country being independent and then each one of it is kind of discrete unit and you fight for that. Very important idea. But in the process, we have forgotten that in addition to being independent, we are also collective beings. We are also interdependent. And therefore, there has to be some attitude change. And that attitude change, I don't think will occur if the power structures don't really change because interdependence involves certain sense of equity that in fact there is a parity in that interdependence which we don't have we don't have yeah. parity as we heard from the last panel as we heard in the climate crisis as we heard in the public health crisis scientists came together somia described that very well we succeeded in trying to understand what was going on but when it fell apart is resources that are completely inequitable. So that to some extent, interdependence as an idea also has to involve parity and justice. And those pieces are 
cultural, social, philosophical, and how are we going to get there? Yeah. Well, it, I think this is really the fundamental point. You know, we are, we're facing what I call a polysystemic crisis. The, the core operating systems that have been in place since the age of enlightenment um, are now proving anachronistic. You know, the, the carbon fueled capitalism, uh, the way we practice representative democracy, which is neither very representative nor terribly democratic, and the interstate system, the nation state and the multilateral system, all three of these core operating systems of Western civilization, at least for the past 300 years, are now proving to be anachronistic. And this polysystemic crisis requires what I call polylateral solutions, the kinds of things that the other panelists have been talking about, the interplay between government, business, citizen, civil society, youth, all have to be engaged in, as Jay Naidu and others in the panel before us were saying, co-creating the solutions right. to these problems. But it won't work even then without a new global ethos of caring and sharing. Values, norms, attitudes, behaviors. And you know, Vishaki, you, you put it so well in your wonderful book, World as Family, when you talked about the culture of us. And I think that says it very simply, and that's really what we need to get toward. Well, and as I say also in the book, that our global family is pretty dysfunctional. And yes. we know when families are dysfunctional, they can be also very destructive. And that's where we are today. But it also seemed to me, as David uh, was talking about, along with Kevin, that we need all of these players, that I think part of the problem is that each one of those players can do different things at different levels. Our problem is also the connective problem. So that there are lots of good things on the ground at the local level. Then some things might happen at the government level. Then something might happen at the international level. But the threats don't get connected. And it seems to me that part of the problem is that each player may not be doing the same thing. So when we say global, the world becomes so abstracted very quickly that we don't actually think about each layer might be a little different. It actually, what one might do at the ground level is to push your local leaders and your national leaders to do something. As David was saying, governments are pretty reactive these days. So how are they going to be pushed to look at the us problem and not the I problem? And that, it seems to me, is that it's a different way of thinking about at each layer, we need to think systemically how it connects to another layer. Exactly. It, it is, in fact, um, easy to, to despair if we only think that governments or multilateral big institutions operating at the global level are the source of our solutions. It's very easy to despair because they seem so dysfunctional. But right. in fact, what happens in our communities, what happens in our neighborhoods, what happens in our relationships, if we connect it to those larger institutions and mechanisms can really produce change. And this is where, you know, Kevin Rudd said, you know, governments are notoriously risk averse and civil society has to be the place where risk is pushed, where accountability is pushed, where creativity is brought to the fore. And I, I see this happening all over the world in ways that are truly inspiring, you know, young people exactly. and artists and cultural leaders community leaders, and yes, government leaders, but they're they're finding that they know they can't do it alone. We have to do it together. We have to do it in new ways, and we have to move quickly. Right. I don't know if you recently, I'm sure you did, read the piece by Atul Gavande in New Yorker. As I was going across Atlantic, I was catching up on my New Yorker, and his example of Costa Rica was really such a perfect example where he said that it's one country, it's not very rich, but it brought together the idea of public health and medical together. That medical is reactive, very individualistic. What is your problem? I'll solve your problem as a patient. But the public health, to put that at the front and center, which is where I thought the I and the we come together, because public health is about systems. 
And But it all began with individuals who were working on the ground. They made the change and made the government change and showed the result. So these are the examples. We have to always think about, let's create some best examples of how people are changing mindsets and policies and attitudes that actually create something that is visible, no matter what the level is, then we can get to the global. Yeah, exactly. I, and I think a good example of that, there are two really good examples. Um, one was the Paris Climate Conference and uh, Banish uh, Bapna and, and uh, Andrew Steer were talking about this earlier. You know, Copenhagen, the previous conference was a failure and Copenhagen relied entirely on the intergovernmental framework. But by the time we got to Paris, we learned that the governments weren't going to be able to move and act. And so Paris really elevated the role of civil society and the private sector. And it was because of that elevation that the governments then responded. And so we ended up with a much better agreement in Paris than we might have. And now as we get ready for Glasgow at the end of this year, we have to push the level of ambition. And this too is the role of citizens and civil society. So, so much of this rests in the hearts and minds of all of us as individuals and our role in these big questions in these big systems. We shouldn't think that we don't have a role. In fact, we have to think we have a very, very important one. And that's where the young people come in, as I want to just have a shout out to all the young people who are involved with One Shared World, because you all are making a huge difference. And without you, we couldn't do what we do. Jamie, take right. it away. Thank you so much, Vishaka. And thank you, Stephen. That was just a fantastic conversation that encapsulated so much of what we all stand for, of, uh, for why we're here. And, and Stephen's point, both of your point, is just essential. This is not the kind of problem where we can just be passive bystanders hoping that our governments will fix this. We all need to be part of solving this. And that's why with One Shared World, with the work so many of us are doing, uh, and frankly, with the work that everybody who's joining uh, this, uh, this summit uh, represents, um, it's all about empowering. It's all about agency and multiple voices and multiple empowerment. It's an all hands on deck moment for humanity and shame on us if we aren't making it possible for everybody to lend a hand to building this kind of safer and better world uh, that we believe in.